Okay, so in this particular video, I want to show you how to use um, your Cameo 5 embossing or creasing tool. I'm not sure, I can't remember what it's called, <laughs> um, in the in your Cameo 4 cutter. And you can do that using Shortcuts A Lot because Shortcuts A Lot is what we call freedom software, which means that it can cut to dozens of other, you know, cutters, brands, and models, and it has a whole lot of freedom in terms of what tool you use where and um, how you assign things and, and I could go on and on. But, uh, but in this particular video, again, I'm concentrating on using this Cameo 5 increasing tool in the Cameo 4. So uh, first thing, if you're new to Shortcuts A Lot, you need to add the Silhouette Cameo 4 to the software. And to do that, you go under Cutter, My Cutter, Manage Cutters. And then over here, you can see the cutters that I currently support. And then in order to add another cutter, I come to this drop down menu and I scroll all the way down and they have all of the silhouette models that are supported are all listed together. So I come down here and I select the Cameo 4 and add to list. Okay, then I click on done and then the mat will change. And so now then it's the, it's the silhouette Cameo 4 mat. Um, and then that basically means then that when I go to cutter, OK, the window, the cut window will pop up and it's set for Cameo 4. So now then to import a file, I'm going to use a very simple box file that uh, that I designed 100 years ago and it's an SVG format. I thought that was probably the most appropriate for uh, for what most crafters are are using right now is SVG. And then I click on open. And now then here's my file and then I bring it up here. Now, one thing to remember is that there's no like um, room for error or margin for error in shortcuts a lot for things like where you place this because you can place this all the way up here and there's no border showing that, oh, you shouldn't get that close. OK, it's your responsibility to understand where your shapes are going to cut. So I always bring things down just a little ways away from that uh, from that mat border just so I don't have to risk the lines cutting off the material. Okay, now then over here on the right, there's a, this is what we call the properties panel and there are a number of different icons here. The two that uh, I'm gonna use today, which are most important is one, the layers panel. Uh, layers are critical to understanding how this panel works because it really helps you make a lot of your work easier, your designing easier, and then also assigning layers to do what you want them to do. So I'm going to open that up and you can see in this case I have a cut layer and a score line layer. And if you happen to open a file and you're not sure what it is, well just you know take advantage of the eye things to you know kind of hide things and then figure out you know exactly what it is that your various layers, you know, what what's there and what do you want them to do. So then to assign them to what you want them to do, over here on also on the properties panel is this wrench icon, which is the style panel. And this is one that's also important. Now, the style panel doesn't matter if you're going to be exporting this file to then use in a different cutter. Let's say you have a Cricut or something. Well, Cricut, it can't legally be, you know, scowl can't legally cut to a Cricut and it can't cut to a scanning cut by brother. It can really, but it cuts to dozens of other, you know, brands and models of cutters from companies that are just open. They're kind of like, yeah, we don't care if other software works with our cutter. For example, the new Caesar cutters. So nice that they can do that. Um, so anyway, so here on the style panel, then when you select one of these layers, you will see, you know, this kind of lights up. And then this is where right here, you would select uh, what you want it to do. So since I selected the cut layer, I want it to cut. And then the tool, it's set to one. I have a choice between one, which of course is the left side, and then two, which is the right side, just kind of like similar to how Silhouette Studio works. So, but again, you know, with Silhouette Studio, the, the, it's recognizing what tool you've put into the machine. Scout can't do that, and it doesn't want to do that. It didn't care. <laughs> it's like up to you. The only thing you have to remember is that if you're using the auto blade, that needs to be on the left-hand side uh, in order to do the uh, the depth setting. But otherwise, um, you know, all your other tools can be used on either side. So, including your other blade holders, like the ratchet blade holder, you could use on the you know right side or left side. Doesn't matter. 
So now then, um, so we got that one set. So then the score line layer, when I select that, that's the one that now needs to be set. I need to make some changes. I don't want it to cut. I want it to draw. Now you'll see there's both a draw and a score here. This score is different. This score was put in for those who are kiss cutting stickers. And so it is set to where it really is just meant to be used with a blade because it's going to, it's going to score and it's going to cut in all in the same process, but use a different cutting force. Cut Typically, you'd put the cut force higher and the score force lower, okay? So don't use that. You want to use draw. And draw is used whether you're using a creasing tool, an engraving tool, or a pen. Okay, so I'm going to set draw, and then, of course, I want it set to side two. So now I click on the cutter icon up here, and um, let me just go through a little bit of this. Uh, first of all, you'll see the Cameo 4 is selected here, and then I'm using USB. You have an option for Bluetooth if that's what you prefer. Uh, you don't have to do anything here. If you want to see whether or not it's connected, you can click this button and then test connection and it'll do like a little jog to indicate that communication is working. In the cut mode, leave it WYSIWYG. That's the way Silhouette Studio works. There's another option for origin point that you might want to use when you're just doing regular cutting and not doing like a scoring cut. And all that does is if you have origin point, let's say you had a a heart way down here on the mat. Well, it's going to—it's basically going to cut it up here next to where wherever you have the blade uh, located. Um, but again, for this purpose, use WYSIWYG, and we've got use cutting mat on because we're using one. And then here is where the left side, you, you have a choice here between looking at the settings for left side and right side. So you start with the left side, and because <clears throat> that's the side that has the auto blade, I have, you know, I have cut selected there. Um, if you want to set, I'll show you in a minute about preset. There, there are some presets in this menu already. I have not tested these, so I can't attest to the fact that they exactly match what's in Silhouette Studio or that they work so it's kind of like that that's up to you uh, but I will show you how to create your own preset for the holder I've got the auto blade and you have a choice between blade auto blade or or pen notice you won't find anything like for uh, the rotary blade because the rotary blade does require um, it, you, remember, you know there's like kind of a funny little algorithm, right, that does extra cuts so that it can get the rotary blade turned the direction it needs to be for the next path or whatever. That's not built in. That's a proprietary um, algorithm that Silhouette owns, and so that's not available. Your sure cuts a lot is the one you want to use just for kind of like regular cutting, you know, with any of the blades or, you know, using some of the other tools. Um, he, down here, this is the overcut setting that I believe matches the, the one that Silhouette um, also has. Um, <clears throat> and then the um, and then multi-cut, this is where you can set the number of passes that you want uh, for this particular cutting, this particular card stock. I can leave that off, uh, but I will turn it on in a second for the embosser. Um, for four, the four setting, again, this is the same scale that um, that is used in Silhouette Studio, and for this particular cardstock that I'm using, I have it set at 25. I forgot the blade depth. This, of course, is the blade depth that applies to uh, the uh, auto blade only, and I had it set at 3. And then, let's see, and then the score force, again, this only applies if you've assigned a layer to score, and again, you can set a different force compared to the regular cut force if needed. Works great for those cutting stickers and where they want to kiss cut around, just around the sticker, and then a full cut, um, either a big rectangle to cut out all the, the stickers at one time, or some, some of them now, you know, they cut out individual stickers to sell, um, and then having that extra little internal thing. It makes it like an easy peel sticker if you want to look that up. And then finally, the uh, the speed that I was using for uh, doing the cut, I've had it set at 12. So since this was successful and I go, yeah, I keep using the same car stock and it keeps working, well, then I can come up and make it a preset, which will then save all of these settings. And so then I just click plus here and you can again confirm that they all look correct, what you want to use, and then just change this uh, title up here to whatever you want it to be. And so this is, um, oh, I can't even remember which cardstock I'm using. Well, I'll just call it my medium cardstock. <laughs> medium cardstock, cardstock, and then dash. And I think I'll put cut on that just to remind me that that's what it is. And then you click on OK. And so now then, this is now going to be in your list down here at the bottom. It keeps These are the ones that the developer put in. And then down here will be the ones that uh, that you enter. And then, of course, any one you want to get rid of it, you can just hit uh, this little minus button to delete it. 
All right, and so then the other side, then I say select this, and I select the other side, and now then this one um, pops up draw pen, um, which is what you want, and then also um, you can. There's already a preset for pen, but you can of course just change it. So um, in this case, and now then, well, let's go down here. So it's got pen set, draw draw lines, um, and then this prompt. Turn that off because otherwise, what it would do, it would stop after it did the embossing or creasing, and then before it started to cut. And you don't need that in this particular situation. You want to just to do both of them right at the same time. So you don't need that prompt. But, but let's say, for example, you were cutting, you were going to color with three different pens or something. You're going to be drawing with three different pen colors. Well, then you'd want the prompt turned on so that once it does one, you know, one part of your design in one color, then it would stop and wait for you to change out the pen and then you could go to the next color and then the next color. Um, for the when I do the creasing, I think it's best to use multi-cut. If you try to use like a really high uh, force with the multi-cut set off, right? Just to try to get it done in one thing. I find that it can it can because you've got so much friction going on there with that tool dragging you know, across your cardstock, it can cause the mat to slip a bit under the wheels. And once that happens then, and it's finished embossing, then when it goes back to actually do the cutting, the cut lines will be slightly off from the fold lines. And that's not what you want. You want those to match up, you know, like right here in the corner. You want a, a nice matchup with the cut line between the fold lines and where the cuts are. So that's why I've always thought it's better to set the multi-cut, use multi-cut. And this is true on all cutters. It's not just like something wrong with a Cameo 4. I do that on all of even my high, high force cutters, I still do the same thing. So for this one, um, I'm going to set the multi-cut to two pa passes. The blade depth doesn't matter because you don't have the auto blade on the left-hand side uh, involved with this. It's, this is all on the right side. And then I set the force at seven. That's what I was using. And then I had the speed set at 10. So now then I can, again, make this a, a, a my own um, preset and I'm going to call it uh, medium cardstock dash score okay and then click on OK all right and so then at this point I'm ready to go ahead and say, and by the way you know here it shows you up here what's you know what's involved at left side right and right side so that's a good thing is to use this preview and also this preview you know you can you can make this window bigger if you want to you can uh, zoom out you know, so that you see the entire cutter and get a feel for what part of the material where it's going to cut something or zoom in. Lots of options here. So uh, always, you know, I, I encourage people always play with the icon, <laughs> see what they do. You know, that that's the way you learn. And also, I forgot to mention over here, for example, if I turned on cut selection only, then it would only be whatever is highlighted would work. So if I went back here, I went back to red, you'll see that my cut, my outer cut is no longer there because I had only left the score line selected. So that's used. That's just a kind of a one way to control um, cutting by color or something like that. Um, and then, of course, you have the mirror H and mirror V, you know, if you're cutting something where you're going to flip the material over, like, say, HTV. All right. So at this point, then I'm ready to click on cut. And then the right side begins doing the scoring of the lines. And as I mentioned before, I had it set to it does every score line two times before it moves on to the uh, to the next. Okay, now it's switching over. It does the auto blade to put the blade depth correctly at three. And now then it's just done. Doing the outer cut for the box. Okay, and that's that part. So now then I will eject the mat and then uh, let's pull off and see how it looks. There we go. And then it'll get down and you can see um, how even the the depth of the embossing or scoring uh, lines are. Uh, there is some 
problem right here, which I hadn't experienced before, where this looks like a little bit, it's, it's off a little bit. So that's something I might need to adjust the, um, the amount of pressure that I was using. I mean, use, you know, like maybe even less pressure and then and a third pass if needed. So keep that in mind in case that's, uh, you know, if you've run into that problem. So otherwise, um, that's it for this video. And if you have any questions, be sure and let me know.